A scene with some police officers standing outside of a room is shown at the beginning of the movie. At the same time, every police officer was making gestures. The door to the room is slammed by the police officers. The police asked a girl who was using a computer to raise her hand. She raises her hands and imitates what was done. On the building's ground floor, there were some police officers posted. We warned you not to enter this room. Why didn't you listen to us? Two agents said as they walked up to those officers. Why did you end up there? The cop remarks that a girl needs a lot of security. She's coming with my people. The agent declares, the girl is killing your people. This occurs. Exact same. The girl orders the officers in the room to leave. The girl then makes a boss call. Her boss orders her to move and go to a distant phone booth. There, the girl manages to flee. Also noticing the girl are the agents. They adhere to her. The girl was very nimble and quick. The agents were quick and energetic as well. Running, the girl reaches the phone booth. There was also a truck seen there. The pickup truck approached the phone booth. The young woman rushes into the phone booth. As soon as she picks up the receiver, the truck crashes into the phone booth. The agents exit the truck and discover a phone booth where there was none. They claim she fled, but she actually, they were looking for a young boy. Neo was his name. Neo was revealed to be a hacker who slept next to his computer. When he reads the message that says, wake up Neo, he discovers a second message that instructs him to follow the white rabbit. When Neo noticed where the messages were coming from and who was sending them, he was shocked. He receives the second message and hears a knock at the door at the same time. Neo looked, and his friends were there. They are there to purchase Neo's software. Neo takes their payment before providing the software. Neo's friend invites him to join them because it will be enjoyable. Neo declines to accompany them. Neo, meanwhile, observes a girl with a shoulder tattoo of a white rabbit. After saying, okay, I'll go with you, Neo follows them. They visit a bar. Neo was there by himself. The girl from the movie's opening scene approaches Neo in the meantime. It indicates who killed those policemen. Trinity was the name of this girl. When Trinity says hello Neo, Neo responds, do you know me? Yes, I know everything about you, she replies. I am aware that you came here looking for someone. Actually, you are looking for the answers to your own questions because you are very familiar with them. What is magic? He asks her, in response to her question. She claims that you will find out because a man named Morpheus is looking for you. Soon, he'll track you down. When Neo arrives at work the following day, he finds a package there. The package contained a cell phone. Neo pulls out the phone. When the phone rings, he answers it and says, Hello. Hello, Neo. Do you know who I am? Says a voice. Morpheus, on it, replies Neo. Yes, I am Morpheus, as you correctly identified, he replies. I was looking for you, he tells Neo. You have supernatural abilities, but regrettably we don't have much time. You can check if there is danger nearby, he tells Neo. Neo finds three agents, and among them are the ones who previously attacked Trinity. What do they want from me? Wonders Neo, Morpheus. Declaring, I don't know, but they'll treat you poorly. Later, Morpheus leads Neo and says, if you want to leave from here, then obey me. Neo attempted to flee, but he was unable to run. Neo is taken to their cell after the agents capture him. They inform him that a man by the name of Morpheus has contacted him and that he is the world's foremost terrorist. You must meet him and bring him to us, please. We will pardon your transgressions in exchange. Since they are aware that Neo is a hacker, they inform Neo that hacking is wrong. We will absolve you of all sins if you will assist us. You will be let go from this place as well. Neo says I need to contact my attorney. What? The agent asks. Will you tell your lawyer? If you don't have a tongue in your mouth? As Neo watched, his face disappeared while it was stuck. After that, the agents place him on a table while pulling out a transmitter that turns into an insect and enters Neo's abdomen. 
Morpheus calls Neo as soon as he jerks awake. They approach you before I do, he says. They will put an end to you if they find out you are a savior. Come under a bridge if you want to meet me there. When Neo arrives there, a car shows up. Trinity was also in the car with two girls, and one of the girls asked Neo to take off his shirt as soon as he sat down. Neo initially objects, but after the girl explains it to him, he agrees and takes off his shirt. With a gun that resembles a machine, the girl removes the insect from Neo's abdomen. Neo has experienced the agents putting it in his stomach in his dreams. Although Neo thought it was a dream, that was actually a real event. Due to the insect-like transmitter's assistance, the agents were keeping an eye on Neo and watching him participate in all activities when they threw the device. Neo was then brought to Morpheus. I know why you came here, says Morpheus. You could not explain despite knowing everything. You are aware that something is wrong with the world, but you are unsure of what it is. The query that brought you here today is this one. You are fully aware of what I'm referring to. Neo queries, magic? You want to know what magic is, says Morpheus. Yes, tell me, Morpheus says this entire world is magic, responds Neo. The reality of the world is being concealed from you, though. No queries, which truth? Unfortunately, the magic cannot be understood, says Morpheus. You must comprehend it for yourself. Morpheus then displays to him two bullets, red and blue. He addresses Neo. You can return to your world if you eat the blue tablet. You'll never fully understand what magic means. You will be close to the truth if you eat the red tablet. Neo consumes this red bullet. There, Morpheus leads him to a different room. It was their operating room, and there were numerous machines. They then implanted numerous sensors into Neo's body. The red tablet he consumed was actually a computer program, according to Morpheus. What does it mean that it will help you get into your real body? Asks Neo. After some time, you will understand, says Morpheus. Nearby Neo was a mirror that was melting. It completely melts and fuses with Neo's body when he touches it. When it occurs, Neo faints. Then Neo, who resembles a human, awakens elsewhere after being packed inside a sizable plastic bag. Liquid filled the plastic bag completely. Within the body of that person were wires. When he looked around, he noticed that many others were just like him. They were additionally liquid-filled and bagged in plastic. Then a flying vehicle shows up and cuts all of his wires. Someone then opens the bag from the bottom and plunges into the water after it. In the interim, someone arrives and takes him. When he awoke, there were Morpheus and his team members. He queries, am I alive? They respond, yes, you are alive, and he queries, why are my eyes burning? You opened them for the first time, that's why, they retorted. Your body is still fragile. Rest up, we'll talk more later. After recovering, Neo visits Morpheus. Morpheus says, you wanted to know what is magic, at this point. He responds, yes, okay, come with me, says Morpheus. He then forces Neo to sit. In a seat. He links a computer program to his brain. No enters the computer application. There was also Morpheus. He is informed by Morpheus that this is a unique computer program. We are able to think of anything with its assistance. Like any form of attire, instruction, or weapon, etc. Are we actually inside the computer program? Asks Neo. Yes. Don't you believe? Asks Morpheus. Look at your face, hair, and clothing. Every aspect has changed. You are familiar with the 20th century, according to Morpheus. This is a fictional world, mind you. You have been a resident of the magic world, as we call it, up until this point. As he says this, he displays a world on a screen. This is the world of today. Darkness prevailed, says Morpheus. This is the real world. Up until today, you were in a dream. The real world isn't like that. Morpheus claims that, based on our knowledge, intelligent computers were created by humans in the 21st century. These machines are capable of thought. A computer created its army. It later engaged in combat with people. The sun was permanently lost by the humans despite winning the war. After the war, the sun never appeared again, 
but machines need it to charge. The machines are aware that the human body can generate heat, filling in for the sun's absence. The machines began to grow people to make up for their lack of energy. Here, the vast human fields were created. Not only were crops sown, but also humans, and I saw this dangerous scene. When Neo wakes up in that bag, he has also seen what the scene means. Nothing was clear to him. Morpheus denotes the strength and intelligence of the machines in this world. That's how the humans and produce the humans in order to keep them alive so they can obtain energy. Although not in the senses, humans are still alive. Because everyone is sleeping in the same room. The humans in the sleeping chamber are fed the melted remains of the dead people as food. What is magic? asks Neo. This, according to Morpheus, is a computer program created by machines for people. So they will have control over people. This is an imaginary world. After hearing this, Neo states, Accept this, yes, I know, but this is the truth, says Morpheus. You must acknowledge this reality. After hearing all of this, Neo was unable to comprehend. He begs to be removed from this computer program immediately, and upon his exit, Neo declares, I don't believe you. While saying this, Neo passes out. When he awoke, Morpheus was in front. He told him, Morpheus, it's best if you don't tell me everything. Didn't you want to be released from the spell? Morpheus asks. Neo declines to respond. According to Morpheus, the dream world you have been living in up until now is actually the world of the 20th century. But in truth, we're in the 22nd century. Then he informs Neo that a human was created using magic and that it consists of a excessive greed and supernatural abilities. He took the initiative to do what we are doing today and possesses a variety of magical control abilities. He is also capable of releasing us from this magic. But he passed away. Oracle foretells that the savior of powers will be born once more after his passing. He'll extinguish this magic. He will free us from the magic and put an end to the conflict. That is why, in our ongoing search for the power savior, we kept coming back to magic. Now that you have the power of the savior, our search is over. He follows that by attaching Neo's brain to a computer. Neo now has excellent fighting skills thanks to the implanted fighting skills. With Morpheus, Neo visits a computer program, the sparring session, there, going on. Morpheus and No, Morpheus later performs a building-to-building -building jump. It was a long way away. To do this, he requests of Neo. Can I do this? Neo inquires to him. He responds by saying that you should have had self-confidence. Neo was unable to jump when he did this, though. He tumbles to the ground. In spite of his bleeding nose when he awoke, Neo declared, I think it was an imaginary world. Your mind can make it real, says Morpheus. If we pass away in the made-up universe, we will pass away here as well. According to Morpheus, a human body without a mind is nothing. Their body stays here when they enter the fantasy world, only their mind leaves. The agents are so strong in the imaginary world, according to Morpheus. Since it was an imaginary world, their abilities are also constrained. It is also true that the person who opposed the machines perished. Neo inquires, will I be saved from the bullets? After hearing him say, but I know you will win. If you are completely prepared, the bullets won't hurt you, says Morpheus. Their teammate Cypher was envious of Trinity's love for Neo because he also harbors feelings for Trinity. I wanted to go back to the imaginary world, he says when he first meets the agents. My body needs to go to the energy hub. Do erase every memory of my existence as a human. I want to accumulate wealth and become famous globally. If you just give us the code for the computer in Zion City, the agent promises you will get what you ask for. Obtaining the Zion City code entails obtaining their address. The agents will destroy everything if they manage to crack the code. Similar to their tools, aircraft, and platforms. Cypher claims that I don't possess Zion City's computer code. I'll turn over the man in possession of the code. It refers to Morpheus. It is depicted that Morpheus brings Neo to the Oracle. Do you feel you are a savior? The Oracle queries. Neo asserts that I am unsure and that I cannot comment. Following that, 
The Oracle noticed Neo's hand and face, and, you have a lot of talent, but perhaps you are just waiting for the right opportunity. The Oracle predicts that there will come a time in his life when Morpheus' life will be present and he will be on the other side. You then have to decide between two lives. Following that, Neo and his group head back to the location they had been leaving earlier. Neo notices a black cat in the interim. Neo tells his team, I have seen a black cat when it goes, I have seen another one, as he continues to see the same black cat. They are aware that something is wrong. When they went to the Oracle, Cypher threw his cell into the trash, letting the agents know that he had done something wrong. He was part of Morpheus' team and was at their location. Once they know about them, they will transform this structure into something magical. All of this was being done by Cypher to catch them. They were all caught in the same situation. All of the exits were locked when the agents and their team arrived. They can only exit from the 8th floor, where they must move while being supported by the wall. The agents find them on the 8th floor, but are unsure of their location because they were looking for them on the 8th floor. On the other side of the wall, however, they were outside. The agents discover they are behind the wall when Cypher willingly coughs. They start launching projectiles. Neo is being held by an agent as they destroy the wall. Just as he was going to pull him toward him, Morpheus breaks the wall. He protects Neo. He tries to trick them into capturing him here. They all begin to run after it. Cypher voluntarily lowers himself. As a result of his presence with them, the agents will detain him. Others flee, but the agents keep Cypher. Cypher then refers to his main ship, saying that it is the location of their bodies. Here, Cypher tells a lie. Take me back if our car is in an accident and I'm saved. He was instructed to return to the nearby phone booth, where he would be driven back. The observable fact is that their brain can reset. The reason there are phones everywhere in the imaginary world is so that they can use them to return to reality. They will always connect to their bodies through phones whenever they enter the imaginary world. After that, Cypher regains control of his body. Later, Cypher terminates every operator who was contacting other people. Trinity places a call to the operator, and Cypher answers it. Cypher now makes it clear that I carried out all of this. I've got Morpheus in my net. I'm currently sick of this world. I want to return to my fantasy world. She asserts that it is an imagined world rather than the real world. He claims that this is the actual world and that it is hell. One more. The world is better than this. You chose Neo even though I loved you. Now watch as each person dies one by one. Then Cypher cuts each person's brain wire individually. It causes two of them to pass away. Are you of the opinion that Neo is a savior? Cypher asks Trinity. Cypher responds, okay, let's see who will save your savior, to her affirmative response. I'll cut his wire from here and then see if anyone can save him. After that, one of the men was still alive when Cypher was about to pull the wire. Here, he puts an end to Cypher. Calling Neo and Trinity to his ship, he does so. On the opposite side, Morpheus is shown being held by agents who inform him that we have created the world of heaven. Happiness was present. Humanity's crop was ruined. In the heavenly world, people are attempting to awaken. Later, we created a world with sorrows and difficulties. Everything existed to which a person could become addicted. All of this is desired by humans, so we created a different world. The agents will stop at nothing to obtain Zion City's computer code. They will destroy their spaceship and city if they manage to crack the code. Zion City is still located in the planet's center. There are humans there, but since they are machines, they are unaware of what is happening. To destroy the city and humans alike, they need to know the code. However, Morpheus will. Regardless of the consequences, he must refuse to reveal the code. An injection is given to Morpheus. His body will begin to sluggish down. Morpheus will then reveal the code to them. Morpheus' entire crew is aware of this, because they can view all of Morpheus' brain's activity on the computer. They make the decision to remove the brain wire from Morpheus. Morpheus will thus pass away and receive the code. 
Don't do this, Neo warns, because I'll go rescue him. Trinity agrees to support Neo. Oracle has told Neo that there will come a time in his life when he will act in this way. When you must decide between Morpheus' life and your own. Morpheus, in Neo's opinion, is a significant human. He is a unique human, Neo concludes. But, Morpheus will be saved even if it means losing my life. Neo and Trinity didn't start attacking the agents until today. That a person assaulted a machine. Because the equipment is both strong and dangerous. Neo claims that after saving Morpheus, they take him away because the Oracle told him that only one would be saved. The Oracle, according to Morpheus, said what you wanted to hear. Oracle didn't say you are the hero everyone is looking for. Morpheus believes in you, she told Neo. He can sacrifice his life for you because he believes you to be the savior. Then Morpheus commands his operator to return us from his make-believe world. They are directed to the phone booth by the operator, close to the railroad station. From there, I'll take you home. When they get there, Morpheus enters first. When Trinity moves, the agent enters and fires, hitting the receiver. However, Trinity left before that time, leaving Neo by himself, and the receiver is also damaged. Neo and the agent are engaged in a fierce struggle because he has nowhere else to go. The agent wants to push Neo under the train, but Neo flees from there as he does so. The agent as a result falls beneath the train. However, since it was a machine, it had no impact. The agent exits the train as the door opens. From there, Neo flees. Then it is demonstrated how the machines find the, where Morpheus and Trinity were. The machine is approaching them in preparation to attack them. They have an AMT button that they can use to disable the machines, but Trinity claims that they are unable to use it until Neo arrives. Don't worry, he will come, says Morpheus. Morpheus thinks he is the savior, hence the reason. Neo was rushing to the phone so he could call for help, but just as he gets close to it, the agent shows up. It now fires a barrage of bullets at Neo. It causes Neo's death. Morpheus and Trinity are upset upon seeing it. Trinity says, Oracle told me the person I love will be the savior, as she sobs. I am not afraid because I love you so much. As the savior, you are immortal. It is displayed in the made-up world that Neo has resurrected. The three agents fired at him after being startled, but when he reached out to stop them with his hand, they stopped. He selects a bullet and drops it. The other bullets are shot down as well. The primary agent then battles with Neo after that. Now that he is stronger, Neo disposes of it without difficulty. He is the savior that the people have been waiting for. These agents resemble computer code to Neo. They actually dressed like this. Then Neo enters an agent's body and destroys it before emerging. In the ship, Trinity and Morpheus find that Neo has recovered and is once more engaged in combat with the agents. The machines attack their ship in the meantime. Neo killed one of the agents and the other two made off. The phone that Neo must use to access his world rings. When the machines were about to put an end to them, he had to leave. In the meantime, Morpheus pressed the AMT button. Neo picks up the phone as well and goes back to his world. The machines that are meant to end them are destroyed as a result of pressing the AMT button. Neo addresses the phone booth, the guardians of the magic, I know you're listening to me. I am aware of your fear of people. I will now release everyone who is imprisoned in the magical realm and show them a future without machines as rulers. It means everything to them. Must observe. The universe where there are no restrictions, rules, or boundaries. Neo then hangs up the phone. Like Superman, he flies through the air. The movie comes to an end here. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.